Hey y'all, here I am again with another roundup, and well, it's yet another month where I'm much more invested in albums than standalone single releases. It's been quite a good year for the former, and given how much better my albums videos have been doing compared to these videos, I'm wondering if the lifespan on this particular series is soon reaching its end? I don't know, if anyone has any strong thoughts on that, feel free to let me know. In any case, I did still uncover quite a few cool tunes this past month, so let's crack into yet another fresh batch of tracks and singles from July 2024. <laughs> So Nilla for Yanya is a musician from London I've been aware of for quite a while, with her work spanning from such various territories as indie rock, sophista pop, and even post-punk. Her 2022 album Painless, with its lead single Midnight Sun, got quite the buzz back in its day, and well, yeah, I do like her. Though to be honest, while I've always appreciated her presence and enjoyed her work, I don't think I'd previously listened to a song of hers that I could go as far as to say I loved. And that changes here, because Call It Love is just wonderful, easily the best I've heard from her so far. Her vocals are just about as soft and languid as I've come to expect from her at this point, but I also feel a notable difference in the flavors of instrumentation here, with her usual electronic embellishments taking a backseat to the more organic textures of guitar plucks, tambourine, and muted piano. All this pairs well with the themes regarding self-discovery by way of deep-seated intuition, and when the guitars and keys come to a pronounced swell at that absolutely glorious instrumental break, it's like we're floating along the journey with her. Like I said, this has very much been my favorite turn I've heard from Yanya, and I'm so so very eager to hear more. Every now and then, I'll get acquainted with bands through ways that have little to nothing to do with their music. In the case of folk rock collective The Crane Wives, it was the cover to their 2016 album. Amazing. Incredible. No notes. Anyway, they have another album coming out very soon, and if their singles are any indication, this is bound to be a pretty good time. Bitter Medicine is one of the most immediately charming songs I've encountered all month, with its bright and bouncy interplay between its rhythmic guitar, easygoing drums, and rumbling bass. Yet what I'm particularly impressed with are the band's skill for three-part harmonies, which give the track such a distinct distinct, lively, even fun personality. The lyrics of the song handle the topic of passive insecurity, the feeling that one could never truly act and react as gracefully as they'd like to because, naturally, they're just a messy person. I do feel like there's a level of strong emotion that could be reached with a topic like that, and this song does fall a bit short in that regard, but it's all a pretty casual affair anyway, and there's certainly room for these as well. I often love showing off songs here that impact me on an emotional or intellectual level, but sometimes I also just want to show off something that I think is very plainly cool and interesting. Fantasy of a Broken Heart are a duo of indie rock weirdos that have made their way around the backdrop of the scene and yet are just barely releasing their debut album very soon. Lost was actually the first I've ever heard from them and oh my god, I love this so much. What really amused me is just how many different, seemingly disruptive elements are jam-packed into this one. Sure, the jaunty piano groove alone is something to behold, but this is also strung along by a strange pairing of these delicate pop harmonies with the deranged, half-spoken delivery of its male vocalist. And even still, we've got components of jazz, shoegaze, and even sophista pop thrown into the mix for fun. Honestly, kind of getting some strong, fiery furnaces energy with the sound, which is very much a compliment. It's wild, wonderful, colorful, and so very strange, in all the fun ways. I've also enjoyed the other singles I've heard from this group, so needless to say, I am tremendously excited for this upcoming record. I need more of this in my life. Life immediately. So I've only very recently heard of Brooklyn electronic musician Bates X, but I do plan on going back to check out her 2022 debut record, Us Ephemeral, as that one's received a bit of critical acclaim. She's returning with another album in October though, and this latest single from it is just wonderful. Immediately apparent on this one is just how impeccable this instrumental is, with layers of droning and whining synths effortlessly gliding along skittering percussion, altogether creating this palpably futuristic atmosphere. It's just a little bit flashy, but mostly it's a darkly emotional piece of work, where 
Wherein Vitesse X glides her lilting vocals along the glossy environment of trance and drum and bass, crafting something remarkably familiar that just strikes me right into the heart. The artist notes that this was a track she recorded when she was really struggling with her mental health, as a therapeutic exercise of sorts. And this is where the familiarity factor really comes in strong. It's a powerful call for stability in the face of deep uncertainty, a desire to blossom past the struggle and enter a new, more colorful stage in life. And if you know anything about me, you know that I am totally about songs like these, though yeah, it also helps that it sounds pretty incredible as well. From now on, I'm not taking my eyes off this artist for one second. So Heinz are an indie pop rock project from Madrid who really caught my attention back in 2016 with their debut album, as well as their 2018 follow-up. I'm a sucker for all female bands, and the breezy yet spunky sound they bring to their craft just charmed me completely. Sadly though, it seems that now the group may be on their last days. Through the years, the four-piece band has dwindled to a duo, and this latest album rollout has all the signs of a band fighting for some final pieces of relevancy before fully fading away. However, while none of their other singles have grabbed me as well, I'm pleased to report that Superstar shows that Heinz has still got it in them. Working along lyrics aimed at a past companion long gone, the frustration felt in their absence, and the organic build of confidence to realize they're better off without them anyway, this works and shifts along those rhythmic patterns of drums and guitars all the way to a big anthemic climax, which, as you know, is something I really like in music. Knowing what I know about this band, this feels very much like one last push to make something special and meaningful while they still can, and I absolutely adore these kinds of songs. Best of luck to Heinz for sure, but no matter what happens from this point on, they left a damn good conclusive entry with this one for sure. Origami Angel is a band of the Midwest style emo variety that has only very recently come across my radar, though their 2019 debut record Somewhere City has gotten quite a bit of positive buzz. I'm definitely checking that one out soon. Really excited about the lead up to this upcoming record though, especially considering how strong these singles have been. I'm not certain if Dirty Mirror Selfie is my favorite so far, but it is the one I've latched onto for the time being. First thing I gotta say is that this song is so catchy. That melody alone was lodged so deep into my brain after after only one listen, and I'm sure it'll stay there for a while after I finish this video. Along with the fact that, yeah, sad to say, I can relate to the sentiment of these lyrics so well. Feeling depressed and out of control in a world that offers no remorse, knowing that it's society that's broken, not oneself, and yet struggling to find the answers on how to properly consolidate oneself in the face of it all. Overthinking in song form, you gotta love it. And I do love it, with these energetic instrumentals and spirited vocals that lead into a much more optimistic conclusion than one would expect. I will admit that the breakdown at the bridge is a little bit silly, perhaps a bit more ham-fisted than necessary, but I like to think that it's at least slightly self-aware of this fact. Life's just strange like that, y'all. Leave it to the emos to make it all sound so darn fun. has been a weird year, but I'm definitely appreciative of the fact that it seems as though everyone is dropping new music this year. And while it's surely not the most important story of the year, surprise, we're getting a new Spirit of the Beehive record soon. Granted, I didn't completely love Entertainment Death from 2021, but they have a unique sound of their kind, and if this upcoming record is anything like I've Been Evil, well, I'm probably in for a treat. The vibes here are just so rad. Tremulous, downtuned guitars building along a steady groove with the dreamy vocals of its singer and the occasional violin act. It definitely sounds and feels cool to bop and dance along to, but this deception is broken by moments of macabre, even violent imagery occasionally pulled to the forefront, making for an instant addition to spooky core if I've ever heard one. The song runs at just over two and a half minutes long, and yet it seems like a whole world is being built from all of the elements presented to us. It's just so darn cool. Easily one of my most anticipated albums for the rest of the year, it's gonna be quite the time for sure. And that's all folks, hope some of these songs piqued your interest, and as always, let me know what else you're listening to, always a delight to read those comments when they happen. But anyway, as always, take care, and I'll see you next time.